Hi everyone, welcome to Chapter 6's um, practice. So we are going to be looking at a P628A, which is on page, if I get there, 363 of your book. And here we'll be demonstrating each of the different inventory costing methods. Now remember, our focus for Chapter 6 is showing you the different ways companies have of removing their inventory when they sell it. Right now in the United States, we have a pretty good system with the, when it comes to technology. We can determine what item was sold. So when we scan an item, the computer system, the software will register it and say, oh, a magic marker was sold. But the problem is, is that every magic marker that is of that type will have the same exact identification code. So it may know a magic marker was sold and it knows how much we should charge the customer. But right now our software is not designed to identify how much that particular marker cost. So we can't say for certain I know that marker cost 50 cents and we bought it on this day. So we don't know the exact cost of items as they are sold. Now, because of that, the FASB has allowed us to choose how we would like to remove inventory as we sell it. So our focus in this chapter is on one journal entry that we did back in chapter five. And that is determining how much do we debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for when we sell. And since they give us choices here, we're gonna take a look at each choice. So the very first choice that we're gonna look at is called first in, first out. Now remember something, it doesn't mean that is how the inventory is being sold. If we knew exactly how it was being sold, we would be able to remove that particular item's cost as we sold that item. But since we don't know exactly how the inventory is being sold, we make an assumption. So the first assumption is first in, first out. So that means we assume that the oldest inventory is sold first. So in 628A, we have Fit Gym, they began with merchandise inventory of 78 crates of vitamins. And they have a cost there. Then they tell us the amount of purchases and sales made during that month. And it says, okay, prepare a perpetual inventory record, which is a separate schedule we use to keep details of all the purchases of our inventory, how much we remove inventory when we sell it, that's our next three columns, and then we keep a consistent inventory on hand. So we're still doing journal entries, but the journal entries and the posting to the general ledger are in total amounts. We're here, we're keeping track of specific items. So we start the beginning of January with 78 crates of vitamins, 78 units, that had a total cost of 4290. So in our inventory on hand columns, we'll populate that information. And if you divide 4290, the total cost, by the total quantity it represents, you'll be able to determine how much each crate of vitamins cost, $55. So the gym paid $55 each, that was their cost. So if you look in the inventory T account at the beginning of the month, it'll say a debit of 4290. This gives us the details of how they determine the 4290. So now we will start beginning to buy inventory. So in, whenever we purchase inventory, we populate the first three columns. How many were purchased? 156. How much each one cost? 64 for a total cost of 99.84. Now back in chapter five, it would just say purchased inventory 99.84. We would debit inventory, credit accounts payable or cash. Okay, so we're still making that journal entry, but we're also 
including that on this record. So after this purchase, what's our inventory on hand? 78 crates of vitamins that cost $55 each because they're still in inventory. And then we just added 156 more that cost $64 each. So our inventory T account will say 14274 This record shows the detail of that total. Now, on the next transaction, January 13th, they sell 180 crates, charging the customer $100. So that $100 is the selling price. So the company has $18,000 in sales revenue. So they would debit accounts receivable, credit sales revenue for 18,000. But how much do they debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for? That second journal entry when we make a sale. Well, now we kick into this method of first in, first out. So we need to know what's the oldest inventory items we have. 78 that cost $55 each. Well, the assumption is we just sold all of those. We sold a total of 180, so the other 102 that we sold were from the ones that cost us $64 each. So we would multiply those two out. We have removed 180 units. 10,818 would be the amount that would go into our journal entry. So we would debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory when we made that sale for 10,818 under FIFO. What's left? Well, the 78 units that cost $55 that were right in here, they're gone. Whoops, those are gone. We sold them right here. And then 102 of the 156 have been removed. So what's left? 54 crates of vitamins that cost $64 each. On the 18th, we're gonna purchase more crates of vitamins. They now cost $75 each. So we'll populate that information in the first three columns and then add them to the existing balance of inventory. So after this purchase, we have 54 crates of vitamins that cost $64, those are the oldest ones, and we just added 114 more that cost $75 each. The final transaction is a sale. Here, we're selling 150 crates of vitamins, and we're charging our customer $116. That's the selling price. So the revenue on this sale is $17,400. But how much do we debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for? Well, under FIFO, we remove oldest to newest. So the first 54 we sold cost $64 each because those were the oldest ones. We sold a total of 150. So we need to still remove 96 more. Well, the only items in inventory are the 114 that cost $75 each. So 96 of them are assumed to be sold and removed. So for this transaction, cost of goods sold would be debited $10,656, credit inventory, $10,656. What's left? Well, of the, the 54 are sold, these up here, gone, and of the 114, 96 are sold. So there's 18 left that cost $75 each. So the end of the month inventory balance, and this is what you would see in your T account as well, is $1,350 debit. So if you went through and did journal entries, every time you purchased, you increased inventory, and every time you sold, you decreased inventory for the amount calculated on our perpetual inventory record, oops, sorry about that, get out of there, okay. The balance would be $1,350, okay? Now, the next question is, how much is gross profit? Now, you gotta remember, how do we determine gross profit? Sales revenue. 
Well, we determined sales revenue as we were going. If you remember, the sales revenue would be the amount we charge the customer times the number is sold. So on the 13th, we charged the customer $100, sold them 180 crates, so 18,000. And now on the 26th, we sold 150 crates, charging the customer 116 each. So that was 17,400. So the sales revenue would have a balance in it of 35,400. We subtract cost of goods sold under using the FIFO method, which is totaled for us already and is displayed right here on our perpetual inventory record, 21,474. Oops, give me a second. I'm just doing my own math on my, okay. So if we subtract cost of goods sold from the sales revenue, the 21,474 from the 35,400, we get our gross profit of 13,926. And here's the calculations again right there down at the bottom. So for FIFO, if you were using FIFO, your gross profit would be 13,926. And it also shows you how to calculate the sales revenue. Let's go to the next method, LIFO. So we're gonna do the same perpetual inventory record. We're going to use the same transactions, but now when we sell inventory, we assume the newest items are sold first, last in, first out. So that means remove newest to oldest. So again, we start our perpetual inventory record with the number of units at 70, uh, 78 at $55 each for a total cost of $42.90. You're gonna see this is very similar to FIFO until we sell stuff. January 5th, we're gonna add in, whoops, sorry about that, 156 more units. They cost $64 each. So now if we list our inventory from oldest to newest, 78 at 55 and 156 at 64. Now, no matter if you're using FIFO, LIFO or average cost, you're still doing your journal entries. We're just showing you different um, ways to determine how much to debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for when you sell something, that's all. So let's sell something. On the 13th, sell 180 crates, charge the customer $100. Sales revenue is still 18,000. But if we're gonna use last in first out to remove inventory as we sell it, the newest inventory items are assumed to be sold first. And if you're sitting there going, we don't always sell the newest stuff. You're right, we, we don't know what we sold. We're pretending, we're assuming. Okay, so do not think that this is actually mirroring how we are actually selling our stuff, because it's not. Or it may or it may not be, we can't prove it either way. So we're gonna remove the 156 that cost 64 each, and then the 24 remaining will come from the ones that cost $55, remove newest to oldest. So what's left after um, we calculate the amount of cost of goods sold? 54 units that cost $55 each. We remove the 156 at 64 and 24 of the ones that cost $55. So under this method of removing inventory, we would be debiting cost of goods sold 11,304 and crediting inventory 11,304 when we made this sale. Now, when we purchase 114 more units at $75 each, we will add them into our existing inventory. So there's 54 that cost $55 and 114 that cost 75. On the 26th, when we sell 150 crates, charging our customer $116 each, and we would record the sales revenue of 17,400, how much would we debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for? Well, remove the newest to the oldest. So the first 114 we sold are from the purchase we just made, and that's what we're assuming here, of $75 each. The remaining 36 
would be removed out of the ones that cost $55 each, the older ones. So in this transaction, cost of goods sold would have been debited $10,530, credit inventory $10,530. What's left after this? 18 units that cost $55 each. So our ending inventory would be $990 under LIFO. Just, just watch this. What was it under FIFO? Let's go back up. It was $1,350 under FIFO. So you will get dramatically different numbers. Cost of goods sold under FIFO, $21,474. Under the method we just did, look at that, 21,834. So the sales revenue didn't change. If you take a look down below your perpetual inventory record, it's still 35,400. But the amount of cost of goods sold changes because we're removing inventory differently as we sell it. So 21,834, subtract that, your gross profit under this method is less, 13,566. So that is LIFO. The final method we have to choose from is called weighted average. And what we do here is that every time we purchase more inventory, we determine a new average cost per unit. Now, when we start the beginning of the month off, we have 78 units, average cost $55 each for a total cost of $42.90. When we add 156 more units, because we're purchasing 156 more at $64 each, we don't add the unit costs together and divide by two. Nope. We have to find an overall average cost of everything. So what we do is determine a total new cost of all the inventory. Take how much was an inventory before the purchase plus the total cost of the purchase, $42.90 plus $99.84. We then divide it by the total number of units we have to the purchase, 178 before plus the 156. And you could see this down below. So we, that's our beginning formula we'll end up with 14,274 divided by 234 units. So our new average cost per unit after this purchase is $61 each. Now, when we sell 180 units, we charge our customer $100 each, but how much do we remove the inventory at? The last average cost per unit. So we take 180 units we sold times the $61 we just calculated. We would be debiting cost of goods sold and crediting inventory under this method for 10980 So three different methods, three different amounts when we sell the inventory. How much are left? Well, of the 234 units, we sold 180, so there's 54 units left that have an average cost of $61 each, or a total cost of $32.94. As you can see there, I'll highlight that. Now, when we purchase 114 more units, they cost $75 each. We go through that same calculation as we did before. We say how much was an inventory before the purchase, a total cost-wise, $32.94. We just added another 85.50 of total cost. That's in our numerator. And then we're going to divide it by the total um, number of units after the purchase. We had 54 in inventory before. We added 114 more with this purchase, so 168. Take the 11,000 total cost, 844, divided by the total quantity of 168 units. Average cost per unit, $70.50. When we sell 150 units in the next transaction, we charge our customer $116, so the sales revenue is still going to be $17,400. But to calculate how much to debit cost of goods sold in credit inventory, we say we sold 150 units. What was their last average cost per unit? 
$70.50. So we would debit cost of goods sold, $10,575 and credit inventory for the same amount. What's left after this sale? 18 units that have an average cost of $70.50 each for a total balance of ending inventory of $1,269. Total cost of goods sold using this method, $21,555. So if we take the total revenue of $35,400, because that doesn't change, see if that's down here yeah and then subtract the new cost of goods sold using the average cost method 21,555 we end up with a gross profit under the average cost method of 13,845 okay so average cost 13,845 would be your gross profit from these transactions. Let's take a scroll back up. Under LIFO, it would be 13,566. And under FIFO, it would be 13,926. So three different methods, three different ways to remove inventory results in three different gross profits. Now, which method does a company use? Well, the company will use the method that best um, meets their financial objective. If a company is looking to have the highest net income, they're going to pick the method that has the highest gross profit. So they're going to pick FIFO, first in, first out, because that, I'm sorry, yeah, FIFO, that leads to the highest gross profit. If a company is interested in using the method that will result in the lowest taxes, they want the method that will have the lowest gross profit. And that would be LIFO, last in, first out. And if you think about it, when you are expensing or removing your inventory, because you're debiting cost of goods sold, you're expensing the inventory as you sell it. Under LIFO, what are you expensing? the newest items, so they have the higher cost normally. Under FIFO, you're removing the oldest to the newest. So items that have a lower cost will generally be removed before um, newer cost items. So that will result in a higher gross profit. And for those companies who wanna be somewhere in the middle, they don't need the highest net income. They don't need the lowest taxes. They're going to pick average cost. So that's what our final, um, come on down here. So that's requirement four addresses that. If you want the least amount of income taxes, you would choose LIFO. And honestly, Congress created last in first out method. If you think it's kind of crazy, that could be one of the <laughs> reasons. But um, it was actually created for income tax purposes. And oh, years ago, back in the 60s, I think, 1970s, the FASB, the people who make our rules for financial accounting said, geez, if companies are gonna use this to create their tax return, we should probably make it an acceptable method for inventory removal for financial statement purposes. We're the only country in the world who uses this method. And if we all go to international accounting, it'll go away. Just give you some background there on it. Okay, so that wraps up our practice of chapter six. Please post any questions you may have to the discussion board.